Hey everyone, Namaskar and welcome to Curries with Bumbi. Today I've come with a very simple curry recipe using butternut squash. So let's get started. I need just half of a butternut squash for this recipe. Do not go very deep while cutting the skin. Just cut it thinly as you want them to retain their shape even after cooking. If you cut the skin too deep, then at the end of cooking you will get a mashed up curry and we do not want that. Now for Indian curries we like our vegetables to become quite soft. But for this particular recipe, I like my butternut squash to become tender, but they should still have some character to them. This recipe is usually made with pumpkins in my hometown back in India. But pumpkins here in the US do not taste the same like those sold in India. But I think butternut squash tastes a lot like Indian pumpkins. Let me know in the comment section if you're from India and agree with me regarding this. I also need potatoes. Before starting to cook, you need to make a spice paste. I need turmeric powder, Kashmiri red chilli powder. You can even use a combination of cayenne pepper and paprika. Then ground cumin. Freshly grated ginger or you can even use ginger paste. Add about 4 tablespoons of water and mix to make a paste. Heat a pan over medium high heat. Being a person from West Bengal, I love using mustard oil for this recipe. But you can use any oil according to your preference. Once the oil turns hot, lower the heat of your stove as we will be adding some whole spices. I need dried bay leaves and a dry red chilli. Dry red chilli gives a smoky kind of flavor to the oil once it gets fried. Then comes cumin seeds. As always, allow the seeds to splutter to release their flavor. Then add the potatoes. Increase the heat to medium high and stir the potatoes for 2-3 to three minutes. I always dry the potatoes after washing by wiping them in a clean cloth so that they brown well when fried. Then cover it on medium heat and stir them frequently in between till they develop a beautiful golden brown color. Okay, the potatoes are looking just the way I want them to look. At this point, I added the spice paste. Then goes the rinsed out bowl goodness. Stir everything on low heat. Be very particular about the heat level because the spices will burn if you use high heat. And if the spices burn, your curry will taste bitter. And we are not making bitter butternut squash curry today. Add a splash of water if you see the spices are starting to stick to the bottom of the pan. It will take about 3 to 4 minutes for the spices to get well fried. Next it's time for the orange beauties to dive in. Add salt and stir till everything gets well coated with the spice paste. Add a splash of water if you think things are looking too dry. Once everything gets well mixed, I added some hot water. Now do not add too much water to start with. You have to remember that the butternut squash will also release its own water. So if you add too much water at this point, then you will end up with a mushy, gluey, butternut squashy mess and that's not what we are looking for. So add water a little at a time as required while going through the stages of cooking. Then cover it and allow it to come up to a boil. 
Once it starts to boil, lower the heat to low and let the vegetables get tender. Ok, my butternut squash has started to get tender but it needs more time. I added some more hot water as things were looking quite dry. Then comes garam masala powder which is usually added near to the end to get its maximum flavor and little bit of sugar to balance the flavor. Do not add too much water, you just need a little bit of liquid to coat around the vegetables. I will again cover it and give it 5 more minutes. After 5 minutes, the butternut squash have reached up to my desired level of tenderness. As you can see, they are still holding onto their shape. They are fork tender and each one of them has a coating of that thick gravy. Discard the bay leaves before serving as you do not want a piece of that to go down your throat or get stuck in your tooth. I do not want any dental issues after trying out my recipe. I love having this with hot steamed rice and with a bowl of dal. It is so hearty and comforting and of course satisfying. If you want to watch more vegetable curry recipes like this, then click on the video showing up on the screen at the end. This is Boombi and thanks for joining me. Stay safe and healthy my friends. Bye bye.